Well, it's a double pleasure to be here, both as a member uh, and as a representative of Great River Energy. I, I uh, want to start off by saying how much I miss Dale Long. Uh, he was also on Great River Energy's board of directors. Uh, he was a thoughtful and hardworking board member. Uh, he was also very considerate of employees. We miss him very much. Uh, Dale would have wanted me to continue with my presentation, so I will. Um, GRE is a member-owned cooperative. Uh, Lake Country Power is one of our members, one of our 28 members. There are 1.7 million consumers who live in the homes uh, served by our members. We're the fourth largest generation and transmission cooperative in the United States. We have $4 billion in total assets and $1 billion in annual revenues. We're governed by a 24-member board of directors, and because Lake Country Power is one of our larger members, uh, you have two board members from your board of directors who serve on Great River Energy's board of directors, uh, Craig Olson and Bob Bruckbauer. And we're also advised by a committee of member CEOs, and Greg Randa is on that committee. Uh, we have 4,751 miles of transmission lines and 11 conventional power plants, uh, but also 710 megawatts of renewables, uh, wind, solar power, and refuse-derived fuel burned at our plant in Elk River. Um, and we also have uh, 300 megawatts of wind power that are under development in a new contract. Uh, some of the highlights of uh, 2016, we have uh, competitive rates compared to a weighted uh, average of regional competitors. Our power cost adjustment last year was a credit of $7.5 million to our members. And what that means is that our purchase power and fuel costs were $7.5 million less than budgeted. Uh, we had business improvements uh, that have amounted to $260 million since 2002. And what a business improvement is, is when an employee thinks of a, an idea or a way to do something that's less costly than the way we usually do it, <coughs> excuse me, we call that a business improvement. And then we add those up, and those have added up to $260 million since 2002. Uh, we've introduced flexible operations at Coal Creek Station, our largest power plant, which is in North Dakota. Uh, we, what, what that means is we've reduced the 790 megawatt minimum load there down to 300 megawatts. And the, and the maximum is uh, 1,146. So that increases the range over which we can operate that plant, and it makes us better able to respond to changes in the prices in the wholesale power market. Uh, we've announced the retirement of Stanton Station, a coal-fired power plant in North Dakota uh, that will retire on May 1st, uh, just uh, a short while from now. We're the 16th healthiest employer in the United States, and that reduces our health insurance costs. Uh, we've introduced Revolt, an electric vehicle program uh, under which if you buy an all-electric car, we will retire renewable energy credits to make the electricity that you purchase for that car uh, renewable. And we've had excellent generation and transmission reliability. A Little bit about the closure of Stanton Station. That's a 189 megawatt coal-fired power plant in North Dakota. Uh, its economics made it necessary to shut the plant down this year. In 2015, uh, Stanton Station showed a net loss of $23.5 million relative to the wholesale power market. And so in 2016, when uh, the numbers came in, uh, the, we recommended, the, the, the senior staff recommended to the board of directors, and the board of directors adopted a resolution that the plant should be closed by May 1st. And continued losses were uh, anticipated there. There were, uh, I've listed here some additional investments that we would have needed to make in the plant and uh, that we avoided by deciding to shut it down. Our energy sources have evolved over time. Uh, this is what our capacity and energy uh, 
these pie charts show what our capacity and energy sources were in 2005. Capacity is the capability to produce energy during the peak hour of the year, and then energy is the electricity that we actually produce during a year. And you can see in 2005, uh, our energy was 80% from coal. And then fast forward to this year, uh, you can see our energy, uh, we expect to be 60% from coal. Uh, and the capacity um, from coal has gone down uh, to 37%. It was 52% uh, in 2005. So we're, we're, we're slowly shifting away from coal, uh, slowly but inevitably, it seems, we're shifting away from coal and toward more renewable energy and more market purchases and more hydropower and natural gas also. Um, these three slides uh, show our ability to ramp down Coal Creek Station uh, to lower minimums. It will allow us to better take advantage of low-cost prices in the wholesale power market. Um, on, this, uh, on the slide are three different cases showing successively lower percentages of energy from coal and correspondingly higher percentages uh, from the wholesale power market. And the increased flexibility that we have by being able to ramp that plant down to a lower level uh, will better uh, allow us to better respond to low prices in the wholesale power market. I want to conclude with our rate forecast. Uh, it's shown here in mils per kilowatt hour. And to get into cents per kilowatt hour, you just need to divide these numbers by 10. Uh, we project a compound annual growth rate of less than 2%. Uh, through the next 10 years, and less than 1% through 2030. Uh, this will be less than the rate of inflation. And uh, finally, Mr. President, I'd like to present to you a check from Great River Energy for $1,000 for Operation Roundup. Thank you very much. Thank you. You betcha.